Welcome to Otahiwe Mount John Observatory, the place where I've spent the last week observing with New Zealand's largest optical telescope, the 1.8 metre MOA telescope. I've been looking at a few different things up in the sky, but what I want to talk about in this video is nothing related to that telescope. Two nights ago, there was a most spectacular event that I really want to talk about. It was an aurora that was visible from here in Takapo in the middle of the South Island of New Zealand. And it's actually the first aurora I've ever seen, and it was truly incredible. It's not too often that aurora make it so far north from the South Pole for us to see in the middle of the South Island. So I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about what make aurora and show you some of the cool time lapses I got of the aurora dancing in the night sky. To understand aurora, we need to understand how the Earth interacts with the Sun. Now to us, it seems like the Sun doesn't really change too much. The Sun is bright and dangerous to look at with our bare eyes, so we should never do that, but in general it just looks like the Sun crosses from east to west every day as the Earth spins. But if you were to take a pair of uh, purpose-built safety glasses to look at the Sun, or a purpose-built telescope to look at the Sun, you'll see the Sun is a very different and dynamic place. What you find is that the surface of the Sun is bubbling as magnetic fields interact with the Sun's plasma. And every now and then you might see flares shooting off the side of the Sun. And since the Sun is about 110 times larger than the Earth across, these structures, these flares that it fires off, are absolutely enormous. But sometimes the sun fires off gigantic flares we call coronal mass ejections. And these coronal mass ejections are just huge chunks of the sun's material, this plasma the sun's made of, fired off into space. And it will just travel through space and it will interact with anything that gets in its way. For Earth, we have a strong magnetic field surrounding us, which protects us usually from the sun's solar wind and these flares. But sometimes, if the Earth comes into contact with a strong flare or runs through a very large coronal mass ejection, then the plasma actually interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. And the magnetic field guides the plasma to the Earth's magnetic poles in the north and the south. And what happens is that these charged particles that were fired out from the sun come and collide with the Earth's atmosphere. And they have a lot of energy and they smack into the atoms that make up the Earth's atmosphere. And they give them energy. And these atoms are very excited because they were just hit by something from the sun, and they actually emit some light. So this is what leads to the different colors that we see in the aurora. If you have oxygen very high up in the atmosphere, then you produce a red color. If you have oxygen lower down in the atmosphere, then you produce a green color. And if you go lower still, if the particles from the sun make it really low into the atmosphere, they can make a kind of pink reddish color from these charged particles hitting nitrogen molecules in our atmosphere. So that's where the color of aurora come from. It's the charged particles from the sun slamming into our atmosphere and interacting with the atoms in our atmosphere. In general, it's not dangerous for us. Coronal mass ejections aren't really that strong. They mostly get caught by the atmosphere. Sometimes they'll be able to make it toward the ground and mess with our power grid. But a growing concern is that they'll also mess with our satellites, now that there's more and more satellites going up into the orbit of Earth, which I've been seeing a lot of as satellite streaks through my data this week. But enough of the science of this stuff, let's look at some amazing time lapses I took of the aurora with this camera here, which is what I usually record my videos with. It was absolutely stunning. I can't wait to see my next aurora. It was a truly remarkable experience, and I do recommend anyone that has the opportunity to see an aurora does so, because they are amazing. Anyway, thank you for watching, and please do enjoy the light show.